It's the time for mm, Pick It From China. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in in the new package from China, where we're going to talk about all kinds of weird stuff that we find in AliExpress. And yep, we're going to get ourselves a new kind of handheld. This is the call the X12 Pro Edition. A couple of you were like requesting this, so I was more like, let's pick it up. It's not very expensive, and I'm really curious what are we going to get. So let's talk about the box itself in general, because there are some things that makes me kind of laugh, because it's kind of funny in my opinion. So the first thing is that like they're calling about the upgraded CPU, but they try to say like it's a quad core A7 Play 10 simulators. Okay. But this is more like the funny thing. They call this D-pad an itching key. <laughs> like, wait, what? Okay, so nevertheless, we're going to get 4,000 milliamp lithium battery inside for long endurance. So, you know, like sometimes these texts on the box are kind of funny in my opinion, but let's take a close look. What can we actually play? So we do have like a 5.1 inch T FF eye care color display, all right. So it comes with all kinds of support and when it especially comes all the way to up to PlayStation 1, especially the places one I'm curious about. So we have like some other weird functions, but that's the question like, what are we going to get with the freaking like device itself? Because the device looks kind of cool and let's see what we're going to get inside. We're going to get an, hey, we're going to get some, ooh, we're going to get some deluxe earbuds. Okay, interesting. The cable for charging, you're still using micro USB, and of course, the toilet paper manual. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> so, the X12 Pro, mm -mm. so it's going to be kind of interesting. And I'm curious, like, if we're going to actually going to get two speakers. Seems to be we're going to get two speakers. Yeah, there was something in the past there. I was like adding like basically one speaker to it. Sounds absolutely horrible. There is no crappy camera or I think there's no crappy camera anymore. But the X12 Pro, of course, it needs to be on the back. They also need to rip off the Nintendo Switch colors. The interesting thing is like we do get some interesting, let's say joysticks. They're kind of weird looking rubberized. So we do have like the screen protector on. Of course, we're going to remove it. Otherwise it looks hideous. Oh yeah, satisfaction. And I can already see like the screen is scratched up here and there. So they're using a very basic screen protector, even some air on the hair, but okay. We have a screen protector, the escape button, select start, and it feels really cheap. The A, B, X, Y feel quite nice. Plus, minus, or I'm guessing this is volume control and the D-pad. But the D-pad, oh boy, that is really bad. It is a floating D-pad, but it feels kind of cheap. So let's take a close look later on how this actually plays. The interesting thing is that we do have an HDMI out, so I'm curious how this is going to be working. The input for the micro SD card, let's see what they're using, an 8 gigabytes, so not going to be very interesting. And here we have like the on and off, audio out, micro USB, and basically we're going to get two of them. You have like the option to just use the thing like in game system, hook up an extra controller. Then we have like the shoulder buttons, they can be reached fairly easy but they feel really horrible and really cheap. So when turning it on, what we're going to get is this beautiful picture of some guy is riding his motorcycle. I think it's like from the car. Yeah, so, okay, that's something new. Normally we're also going to get these like weird intro of Tekken. Okay, so we do have like a completely different layout. And why I'm surprised is that normally we're going to get always like the same kind of crappy menu and software. Okay, so when you're using the volume, you cannot change <laughs> into the menu. We're going to get the shortcuts in here. Take consideration, you cannot change them out. What you see is what you're going to get. So then we have like the option to watch a video if you want to. Yeah, so basically in old school media player is basically what you're going to get. There is no file in here. Then we can browse if you want to. And this is basically nothing to do with internet. This is just basically going into the browsing of the SD card. And we have like display settings, backlight. Okay, I'm gonna say that the device does have like a very bright display, powering off, file sorting, language. Here we can change out the language if you want to. Oh, before I forget, important, the advanced select tune format card. But there's no way of changing the aspect ratio to begin with. A little bit of a bummer. Besides having like a crazy amount of reflection, you can see that we do have like an okay display in this. It's not your best typical display like an IPS, but it's way better than the cheap device we've seen in the past. 
So we're getting into the game folder. We're just going to get into the SD card. I already told you like what kind of games we can play. So we're going to try a couple of like 8-bit, 16-bit games just to see how the emulation performance in general is. I can tell you that they actually used two speakers in this and it sounds not bad at all. Only the emulation performance completely ruins the audio file because it, it sounds really bad. I'm going to lower the freaking lights in here because it's quite difficult to start like recording from this. No, nope, I'm not going to get the extra life. They completely messed up the button controls. The D-pad does feel very bad, but I can tell you that it is not super bad, but the emulation, oh boy. You can hear the crackling noise all freaking time. <laughs> oh, this is so bad. When pressing the escape, what you're going to get is the same stuff that I've seen before. So, kind of funny is that we do have like the option to make a quick load, quick save. Let's go to the settings. Oh crap, I messed up. Oh crap, I messed up. What I wanted to say is that we have like the sound output, key mapping, so we can change out the controls if you want to. Screen size, we can put it on scale, so that's something that we're going to try just for fun, just to see what happens then. It's going to be looking way better with normal XPS ratio. And guess what? It actually works. So with Super NES, we do have like normal express ratio, so that is a positive side. Now they should fix the audio because this it sounds really horrible. Let's try a different system. NES this time, going to going back to the 8 bit. We do get some good sound. When changing the express ratio, you're basically like changing it for every single system. So you cannot say I want to have a certain like SPS ratio with a certain kind of platform. Nope. So one settings for every single emulator. Turbo mode. Wow. And also this they managed to mess up. Okay, here it goes. You can see the background audio is completely messed up. Also we have this very strange line going on there. Like it's not like it should be, you know? But the weird thing is, like, when you're looking at the speed of the game, it's actually not bad. Let's put it high speed. You see no stuttering whatsoever, it's just an Audi issue. Also, the sound effects are absolutely horrible. So finally found a platform that runs something great. For just basic platforming games, the D-pad plays very well. And this also is set to the normalized space ratio. We do have like some black bars at the side. So now I can really enjoy some old school retro gaming with this. How do I get down there? Oh, there we go. Next up, let's play some Game Boy Classic, or best at color basically. So now when you need to move around with the D-pad up and down, you can feel like it's basically like there was something beneath it. Yeah, it feels not like it should be. Really annoying. So I'm glad they implemented some normal joysticks. Oh, by the way, if you're wondering what you should do like the second stick, you can use it to play like this. <laughs> you can just use it like that. Kind of weird. Yeah, so the problem is when we're going to mess around with the XPS ratio, it's completely messed up with the main. Okay, so well, let's see if we can change that out. Um, let's go to the settings. Let's go to the screen size, full screen, go all the way back, return to game, and there we go. Beefcake and dino time. Of course, it's your beefcake guy. Okay, so the character itself has been glitched up. Why there is always something they need to be messing up? How does it work with some beat em ups? Yeah, the D pad is absolutely garbage. 
Okay, so the ultimate test, they are saying we can play PlayStation 1. You can already hear it, right? Oh boy. Oh. And just to be honest, it runs way smoother than the previous models, but it is absolutely garbage. Yep. But again, it's more like an audio issue or... Nah. No, we're not getting full speed. Oh, there it is. But I want to do a different test with this. We're going to try a two-day platformer. And now you will see that it runs so much better. And this is just in case that I've seen many times before that we're going to get a device that is able to play place to one, but only if you're going to have like a two-dimensional game. That doesn't really demanding. Now, what was the box already saying? Something like upgraded CPU. Yeah, upgraded CPU is my ass. When it comes to the plug and play functionality, it works actually pretty good. You're just going to plug it in, it will automatically go to the screen itself, so that is a positive thing. So let's play a game on the big screen. So it's pretty damn cool feature. The only thing if you want to implement an extra controller, you should like get yourself like another like micro USB to a normal USB for getting some controller to work. But it's actually a lot of fun to play it like this. And with some okay emulation, especially with the GBA, we do get some pretty damn cool let's say, configuration this way. But unfortunate with the bad emulation when it comes to Tekken. I just wanted to boot it up, just see if it's going to be any worse. Yeah, it's going to be the same result, but it's not getting any worse. But again, like the HDMI function is pretty damn cool. If it would like fix the emulation performance, I think it would be like a pretty damn cool fun device to play with. But let's do a quick rip and tear and just to see how this thing looks in the inside. Is it like possible to replace the battery? Because that is obviously like a question with these things. Sometimes they use like just a plug to plug it in, but sometimes you do have like the problem that we need to do some soldering. Nevertheless, we do want to remove the four screws over here. Then we're going to get ourselves a pry tool to pry it all open. And let's see how it looks in the inside. Let's see if we can find some gaps here or somewhere to basically start poking around. I think I can put them in here. Yeah. So the trick is how to open this. It's quite simple. You need to find where there is enough space to basically like crack it open. Where we have like this space, we can use some different tools to click it. There we go. Be very careful because the battery can be close. Here we can see like it's opening up all the other parts. It's possible that I'm going to destroy something. My tool is a little bit too big for the job, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so that is quite interesting to see what you're going to get in the inside. And all this time, I was freaking thinking they were going to get us two speakers. See, this is what I mean. That is so freaking naughty. Let's plug this thing out. All right, so there we go. So when you're looking at the inside, like... <laughs> Oh man, oh man, oh boy. So when you looking in the inside, you can see they're quite naughty. And what do we mean with naughty? So at the back plate, we have the option for a second speaker. And yeah, there is absolutely like not only the position or the place for it, but also you can see there, they even have like the holes for it. So sometimes we did see like they didn't have like the holes, so it was absolutely not for like two speakers. The battery in here, they used some double-sided tape. I'm very happy to see that they use unplugged. So if you want to replace the battery, mostly like the code on the battery or do some research on Express, you can get it with the right plug. So you can replace it fairly easy. But let's take a close look at this bad boy. Because also here we do have the option for a second speaker. Yeah, so they are just lazy and trying to cut costs, something like that. Okay, the construction different. Normally we're going to get like one big PCB. This time we do get something different because we do have like two separate PCBs with a ribbon cable so you can replace them if you yeah, if you can even find some parts. <laughs> let's let's keep, keep it that way. So this board has been made in 2021. So it is not like the latest board out there. They're still using the same ATM 7051H. This is a CPU they keep using for, let's say, these like cheaper handhelds. Nothing much to say about this in general. 
like replacing some parts is possible but yeah i think most of the time you don't really replace parts because here is very difficult to find when it comes to let's say pcbs or other materials but nevertheless so this is what you're going to get in the inside a little bit of bummer they didn't implement the second speaker but yeah but doesn't matter it sounds like shit because the emulation is pretty damn bad but I'm fairly disappointed with this new X12 Pro. There is nothing pro about it. The only thing that actually works okay is the GBA. Beside that, it's just a hit or miss with, let's say, platforms. So the overall, like, performance is pretty damn, like, to cry for. And, yeah, I think, like, when you're looking at the upgraded CPU, they didn't really lie about it because it runs a little bit better here and there, but overall it's still the same cheap stuff. Yeah, and the itching key... <laughs> <laughs> We're not going to start about it anymore. Besides that, the D-pad is pretty damn horrible. The display is okay, I must say. They did an okay job with it. The analog stick, I personally really love it. But the overall performance of the emulation is pretty damn bad. We have like, so many different handhelds now that we can play and we can choose from. See, these gave you looking at the same amount of money. Let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you for watching. Consider subscribing, hit that little bell. And it will be great to see you in the next video.